Time for another dive. Immediately after submersion, there, swimming in open water, is the animal that I'm trying to film. Incredibly, this time it seems to be tolerating my camera. This little water monster is the tiger salamander. This one is in its larval form, and these deep pools are full of them. It's on a hunting excursion, and it actually seems to be using my lights to catch prey. They don't bite down on prey, but rapidly opening their mouth causes a suction that vacuums it up. The three fingers projecting from its head are gills, and they're lined with bushy filaments that harvest oxygen from the water. Tiger salamander larvae also have lungs, which they use to control buoyancy in the water. After many nights observing and filming them, I noticed something bizarre and biologically puzzling about these tiger salamanders that sets them apart from others. The bait. This tiger salamander larva is one and the same species as this terrestrial tiger salamander. After hatching and developing underwater, this tiger salamander larva is supposed to metamorphose into this land-dwelling adult. The biologically puzzling thing about tiger salamanders here is that they remain in their larval form and don't leave the water. It's called neoteny, and it could be happening because there are no fish at this wetland. Fish are present in virtually all permanent waters, and they prey on salamanders and their eggs until none are left. To avoid fish, tiger salamanders usually inhabit wetlands that dry up periodically, but there they must metamorphose before the water is gone. Life underwater can be easier than life on land though, and to never have to leave it would be ideal. So tiger salamanders would have the option of not having to metamorphose at a wetland that never dried up and was devoid of fish. And that is exactly what we have here. But there could be more to the story. Larvae living in water are somehow able to detect if the land around them has become inhospitable, and in response they can become neotenic, remaining in their aquatic form. Perhaps the quarry being dug up around them triggered this response. However, both of these explanations are called to scrutiny because some tiger salamanders here do metamorphose. This is a newly metamorphosed tiger salamander that hasn't left the water yet. The stimulus that causes only some to metamorphose is a mystery, but it does have advantages. As long as some salamanders are leaving the water and others come here to breed, there's constant gene flow which prevents inbreeding. And with so many larvae concentrated in these pools, perhaps some individuals find it easier to metamorphose and head for land where there's less competition. This one rests beneath a bloom of dancing zooplankton. Metamorphosed adults and neotenic larvae can actually breed with each other. Breeding has been happening over the past few weeks, and eggs are now beginning to hatch. These are newly hatched tiger salamanders. Those destined for land will acquire black and yellow stripes and begin leaving the water as early as summer's end. In the fields around the wetland, tiger salamanders emerge from mammal burrows. They've spent weeks several feet underground waiting for rain.
Many perilously cross roads to get to where they're going, and often the outcome is probably what you imagine. After an evening of hunting, this salamander is headed back into town where he lives. He lives there because it provides something necessary for his survival. Along the way, he takes heed not to cross paths with a hungry garter snake or raccoon. They aren't deterred by the mild but foul-tasting poison that his black and yellow spots warn of. Finally, he's arrived. Shelter with unlimited space that he didn't even have to build himself. Here at the Prairie Dog Town, the hatchling tiger salamander larvae have grown to almost two inches, and ones that don't become neotenic have until September to keep growing water. Deep and shallow pools that were once separated are now conjoined. Capitalizing on this opportunity, a leviathan of a tiger salamander larva prowls up into the shallows. He can smell a specific morsel here that's more nourishing than the spiny water bugs he's used to eating. He slides into the perfect spot and waits patiently. Tadpoles. This is why Woodhouse's toads avoid breeding in salamander infested waters. There are so many tadpoles spread so wide that the few salamanders who do engage in this feeding strategy won't make any dent at all. Large 12-inch larvae like this are sometimes cannibals. Metamorphous tiger salamanders that haven't become neotenic have just left the water. They're about to embark on an emigration away from the wetland to find mammal burrows in which to overwinter. Not enthused by my visit, this one chooses to take refuge back into the water. <laughs> 